again. So obviously still in quarantine. However, I was catching up on stuff that I missed out on in terms of editing photos. I'm looking through a lot of different trips that I took last year and never really got around to looking at the photos properly. So I'm kind of doing that now. But as a result, I kind of remembered when I was going my Singapore trip, I shot some stuff for a backpack and never really did a review on that. So I'm gonna try to compile that sort of stuff together. Uh, I probably have to add my own shots because I don't know what I was thinking a year ago, but that's not enough for a review. But anyway, as laid back would say, Kotopaxi, Nazca backpack, you're on deck. When planning for a trip, the backpack is usually my first concern. And coming into this, I could already tell that my current lineup wasn't going to be ideal for this multi-country heavy walk trip. For my normal city life, I roll with the Vinta S Series 2. It's attractive, compact, water resistant, and great for light payloads. It has solid organizations for both work and play. There are a ton of quick access pockets and it comes with various packing cubes and field packs to organize the main compartment and make it extremely easy to switch out loadouts. However, the materials aren't the most flexible, so I wouldn't be able to overstuff this bag, and it does seem to sway with heavier loadouts. Unfortunately, the Vinta S-Series does not come with any sternum straps for support. Now on the opposite side of the spectrum, my Burton bag has all the organization I'd ever need. Tons of pockets, in fact, pockets within pockets, a huge main compartment, compression areas, padding, support galore, water bottle holders, places for carabiners, literally anything I could think of. However, this was extremely overkill for this trip, and I did not need to bring all of Boston in my bag just to visit my friend. While I had so much flexibility to allow me to store whatever came my way, I was going to beaches, not preparing for a zombie war. Additionally, while the pack had hardness straps for your body, the pack did not have compression straps for the outside of the bag to keep things locked in. So clothes felt extremely loose and the whole weight of the bag felt separated from my back. And finally, my Peak Design Everyday Bag. This is my tech bag that I generally use if I'm carrying my camera or recording equipment with me. It has wonderful organization for memory cards, batteries, lenses, microphones, and more. Especially if you're a creative, this is a great bag. It's super well designed, but I find it much better as a tech bag than for clothes and other soft items. Due to the design of the bag, it doesn't have a ton of depth because the bag is designed to be more sleek and be more tech focused. So for clothes and things like that, it would be harder to find what I would need at any given moment, especially if the bag was fully filled. You can tell that just by looking at the dividers provided. Since I was planning on keeping my tech light on this trip and I was only going to shoot on my phone, this bag wasn't ideal for organizing my loadout. Obviously, I had to find a better bag for this trip. Something simple, compact, flexible, and no nonsense. And that's where Cotopaxi and their Nazca backpack came in. Cotopaxi is well known for their lightweight and durable goods that are perfect for traveling. And that's the reason why I was attracted to this particular backpack. But before we get into the nitty gritty of what I like about it, let's get over the tech specs that this backpack has to offer. Nazca's main exterior is made of a cotton shell with soft cloth accents. It comes in black, brown, and this beach color that you see here. The shell has some water resistance and will work for most light water exposure. 
I'll get more aggressive to show how this cloth can resist water, but keep in mind this is just cotton. It doesn't have a special water wicking properties, and I don't believe that it has any special treatment to resist water. So if you're in an extended downpour on a long hike, don't expect this to not be soppy when you get back to your home base. However, this will definitely hold up in light showers and protect stuff while you're running to shelter. The nylon lining does a good job about protecting your clothes and keeping everything pretty dry. The main face of the bag has four durable cloth tie-down slots. This can be used to clip carabiners, water bottles, and be used to tie down additional gear like shoes or blankets to give it some nice expandability options. The slots seem to be pretty strong and relatively easy to use with paracord. Keeping with the soft touch theme, all zippers have a long, easy to grab pull tab to make it easy for accessing pockets and making it a breeze to pack. Zipperies are quality YYK enclosures, and the bag also has some zipper bars to help keep zippers from jingling around when you're traveling, but also making it more difficult for pickpockets. From the top, you have access to a quick access pouch, a main compartment, and a dedicated slot for a 17-inch laptop. The quick access pouch is big enough to hold accessory kits, lenses, camera bodies, and smaller water bottles. There's also a soft cloth pocket for sunglasses and a key ring to keep your essentials protected and secure. Every side of the bag has a carry handle, making this a great bag to grab and go with little effort or thought. This is extremely useful if you're flying or driving between destinations a lot. The top and bottom handles do have a plastic ring to allow for clip-on items like carabiners and travel pillows. However, you can also use this to attach the included shoulder strap to make it into a compact duffel bag. I use this for work quite a bit, so much so that I lost the strap when I was in Asia. Moving to the back of the bag, it has an airy nylon backing. There's some thin padding and not much structure in terms of contours. However, the backing is durable, water resistant, and surprisingly comfortable. This is probably one of the easier bags for me to carry on my back despite not having all that tech. It's just very lightweight, sleek, simple, but it's still very, very comfortable. The straps are a solid width to disperse the weight and made of mesh that prevents overheating and sweating. The straps are slightly contoured and feel really good on my shoulders, even with the full pack. They are adorned with a chest harness, which has infinite and secure height adjustability. This is something I think all bags should have. My only gripe is that I wish there was a way to easily remove it or tuck it away when it's not in use. The straps unclip from the bottom and can be stored into the dedicated slots built into the back of the bag. The bottom of the straps can be stored away next to the waist harness, which we'll show a little bit later. This will allow you to use it as a shoulder bag or a briefcase. I love how easy it is to convert through all the different modes. I definitely have used all of them at one point. On back, the pack sits very nicely. I personally think it looks pretty sleek and it doesn't feel like it's swaying or throwing my weight around. It feels close to body and I feel like I can navigate tight areas without being worried about knocking people over or getting stuck. The only gripe here is if the bag is slightly packed or empty, it can look a little saggy, especially if you have something heavy like a camera in the quick access pocket. However, the lack of structure does allow you to break it down into a pretty small package and it's a great way to have some flexibility on your trips. It's so nice having the option of using the Nazca for a quick one or two day excursion without being weighed down by my full payload needed for my journey. On the topic of payload, the 24 liter capacity opens up briefcase style for easy view and access to gear. The pack leverages two sippable separators and a quick access pocket for organization. The organizer pocket can hold cables, decks of cards, smaller games, and even a mirrorless camera with a flatter lens. This can also be accessed pretty easily without having to unzip the whole pack. So for easy access options, definitely use this if you've already filled in your quick access pocket. The main pockets have mesh zipper dividers that not only keep things compressed and locked down, but also have a slight stretch to them in cases you are needing to pack a little bit extra. The overall construction is flexible, thus allowing for some decent crunching to fit for the unexpected or to separate out your dirty items. This bag can seriously hold a ton of gear. I brought this pack to me when I was visiting my friend Kelvin in Singapore and it was perfect for a four day side trip out to Thailand for some beaches and food. It held all my stuff in place and made it easy to find things when prepping for the day. It was like a mini drawer I could throw around and it was extremely comfortable and made it really easy to jump between cities. Here's the payload that I used for that four day trip. 
please note here that I did overpack intentionally to test how much this bag could actually hold. When I was on a local project, this bag was great for jujitsu and was able to hold all my gear, all my cables and peripherals for work, and securely store and protect my laptop. Note, you don't have to use the zipper dividers, especially if you want to pack in more or if you're just lazy. It still will close just fine. I used to use a duffel bag prior to this, and I'd be smashing my laptop down all the time, so this is a huge improvement that allowed me to transition from gym to work without compromise or complexity. So I hope that covered everything on that backpack that you may find needed to make a purchase decision, but I'm here to dash your dreams again, once again. But basically, I don't think that Cotopaxi actually makes this backpack anymore, which was really you know, disappointing to me because it was one of my favorite backpacks. I think the reason why was because it probably didn't sell as much, um, it didn't have the capacity, and really their users are more for backpacking kind of people, people that do like real excursions, not just people who are trying to look for that transition. The reason why this backpack was so interesting to me is because unlike Cotopaxi's normal product line, I don't know if you've seen any of it, but I mean, I think it's very, very colorful. Uh, Cotopaxi, let's just type their name in. Actually, it's right here. Yeah, super, super colorful, right? And the reason why the Nazca stuck out to me is because one, it was a little bit more muted color. And two, I could turn it into a, a shoulder bag so I could really, really use it for work um, when I couldn't use a backpack. So to me, it was a unique offering that they had. Um, unfortunately, they discontinued it, but you can still buy it from places like Musija. Um, but just look on like, Google Shopping. I think they still have the black and like the cargo-ish brown color still. So if you're interested in the backpack, definitely look for that. But if you're looking for something that they currently offer, the closest thing I could recommend See, the thing is, I would say like the Backtack or any of those other backpacks. However, it is their Deldia options, which just means that they'll give you a random color with random paneling, um, which again, if you're cool with it, go for it. But if you want something that's a little bit more muted and for, you know, the same use case as I was using for, um, I would say probably the Alpha. Um, it's 28 liters, so slightly bigger, uh, way more sleek, way more waterproof but probably doesn't have the same sort of like cross functionality between work and play as as other bags i mean it does it does come in a darker color but again it just depends on on where you work and what you do um and then there's the kilimanjaro but that just looks like every other black backpack in the world so in that instance i can always talk about like other work bags but if you're talking about you know still being able to use a bag at work and being able to take it out on a trip, I think the Nasco is perfect and I really wish they still had that around. But um, yeah, look on Google uh, for you know options. I think it runs for around 140. These other options for like the Alpa, I believe is 170. So it's still cheaper than what their current offering is. So definitely check that bag out. I love it, I still keep it, I use it all the time. But hopefully that review was good for you guys. I do have a schedule kind of going on, so I'll kind of flash what my perspective schedule is. Uh, I'm trying to do one every week, like I said before, and right now I'm, I'm meeting this May 4th deadline, even though you may be re watching this at night, but I'm meeting it. May the 4th be with you. You will take that, because in seven days after that, I will have another video for you, and it is supposed to be the Sennheiser TW2s. Again, that is something that I wanted to look at, but I've also been looking at what you guys have been wanting. Again, I'm keeping track of all of your sort of requests and I appreciate all the comments and everything, the suggestions, the likes and everything that you guys have been doing. It's been awesome. Again, I have a list of that too. So I'm gonna show that and show you what potentially we may look at. But yes, we'll get there at some point. We're still in quarantine, so we're still gonna crank these out every week. So. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate it so much. And please, you know, consider subscribing, liking, commenting. Do all the things that you normally do on a video you like and love. And as always, appreciate ya. Peace.